Now, they are a celestial odd couple and their relationship is forcing astronomers to rethink many of their theories. Well, the planet known by the catchy title NGTS-1b is a burning ball of gas 600 light years from Earth. It's also way too big for its sun. In fact, this planet is about the size of Jupiter, but it orbits a star only half the size of the sun. Well, that contradicts previous ideas about planet formation. Let's find out a bit more. I'm joined by Dr. Daniel Bayliss from the Astronomy and Astrophysics Group at the University of Warwick, who led the research. Why is this so surprising? Well, we know that uh, planets and stars form at the same time. And uh, we previously thought that large stars formed large planets and small stars only formed small planets. So when we found this uh, planet that's about the size of Jupiter, but around a star that's only half the size of the sun, it was a great uh, surprise to us. And, and what, what does it actually mean um, in terms of relating to, to us and our solar system? Well... Uh, these small stars are actually the most common stars in the whole galaxy. About 75% of all the stars in our galaxy are these uh, low-mass stars. So what it actually means is that uh, there could be a lot more giant planets in the, in the galaxy than we had previously thought. And, and does that have other implications, if that was the case? Yeah, so we already knew that small stars could form planets like the Earth, and we thought that might be good in terms of uh, finding other habitable worlds. Um, but a planet like this is certainly not habitable. It's far too hot and it doesn't have a, a solid surface. It's more like Jupiter. Um, so it's actually bad news in terms of finding uh, habitable planets. So, so you're saying this makes it less likely that we would be able to ever find a planet like ours? Well, it makes it less likely, but luckily there are a lot of stars in the galaxy, so uh, we still have a, have a good chance if we're able to search for, for small Earth-like planets around other stars in the galaxy. And, and how was this discovery made? Yeah, so what we did was monitor uh, hundreds of thousands of stars, and we looked to see if their light dipped down as the planet passed in front of the star. And uh, this is called a transit. And we, we saw this particular star dip by only a few percent every 2.6 days. So then we thought it might be a, a planet causing the dip. And we had to then go and use other large telescopes to confirm it really was a planet. And, and just what does this mean in, in further detail about the assumptions about how planets are made in the first place? And again, what that means for us? Yeah. So we know that uh, around small stars, they don't have as much material around them when they're forming to, to build giant planets. And so uh, when we came up with uh, planet formation theories, then uh, we predicted that we wouldn't find uh, a planet like this around a small star. So it really means we have to rethink uh, the way that uh, planets are forming around stars. And of course, uh, as we do that, then we, we, we have to think about the way that uh, planet Earth formed and also planets like Earth. So it's really uh, a, a rethink of how these uh, planets are forming. OK, Dr Daniel Bayliss, thank you so much.